Catherine Hammond Walensky. I was a member of the Army Nurse Corps and a member of the 16th General Hospital. We were stationed about 10 miles from the battle lines during the Battle of the Bulge. The General Hospital was supposed to be burned down, but the Germans
candy that we used, that was great. But for comments, uh, there's another gentleman right over here that's going to come to you pretty soon from the 82nd Airborne also. And we wouldn't probably be here if it wasn't for a general called General McGavin, General James M. Gavin. And for this man, I think all of us should have to say another prayer anytime we go to bed. Thank you. Good job. My name is uh, Larry Arrigo. I come from Howard, Mass. Uh, my rank was uh, private first class. I was with the 308 Engineer Battalion, attached the 83rd Infantry Division. That's the Ohio National Guard. And uh, I want to thank everybody here for doing a hell of a job. Thank you very much. My name is Dick Wilson. I was a PFC and I was in the anti-aircraft outfit. And at that time they weren't in airplanes, so they used us as against tanks. I was on a Quad 50 machine gun in the area of Malmody, St. Vith, Stavelot. And I should mention one more thing. At that time, that was the coldest winter in 40 years. That's all I have to say right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, you will. I'm retired Sergeant Henry T. Kipoff. Of course, I served with her bands and five hundred and four parachutists and three rights for all the two and a half years. I also served in Korea twice in Dominican Republic and I'm lucky to be here and be here with all my veteran buddies. Thank you. Thank you. Roger Frank. Yes, I am. I want to thank all the uh, veterans on behalf of the Girl Star Wives for being here and for this wonderful uh, tribute and dedication today. Thank, thank you very you. much. Roger Frank. YD. My name is Albert A. Megner. I was a first sergeant F Company, 101st Infantry, 26th Infantry Division. I joined the National Guards in 1938. I stayed with the regiment until I got wounded in 1944, December the 28th. I uh, was transported to Devons and from Devons uh, to uh, Framingham here. I stayed from March of 1945 till uh, 1947, which I was transferred into Halloran General in New York. The nurses and the doctors here did one hell of a job because I re-enlisted in the service again as a master sergeant, and they were looking for infantry for sergeants and they shipped my rear men into Korea. And, uh, but I want to thank the soldiers here, sailors and all the rest of the military, the doctors and the nurses, for doing such a hell of a job with the people that saved everybody's lives. Thank you. My name is uh, Vincent Sacconi. I was a sergeant at the medical test in the 101st Infantry, the 26th Yankee Division. And my remarks that I was the luckiest man in the world. I joined in, I, we, got, we got drafted, not back, we got activated in 1941, and I lasted until the end of the war in March 1946. And when I was the luckiest man in the world, I survived the Battle of the Bowditch. Then I was a patient at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, and I met 
this nice nurse. I married her and brought her home. And that made me the luckiest man in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. One thing I forgot to say, this soldier that's on my left was in my company F. And when I got wounded, and I'm, he says he doesn't remember me, but uh, I must have been the one son of a bitch if he didn't want to remember me. But I think he saved my rear end. <laughs> Seth Tiberio, uh, Texas and Company F, 46th Infantry, 1st Division. I want to say that uh, going all the way back to the men and women here in America to make our books where we be. All our heroes are very old and they are cool. God bless them all. God bless them. Thank you very much. I don't, like to, I don't like to point anybody out, but human emotions sometimes just overtake you. I was at his place two weeks ago. Oh, just, just outstanding. Yes, I'm coming back to you. I'd like to say that I am living on the same estate as the Cushing Hospital. I was a whack in, in the Second World War station in Sherbet. And uh, I remember the time of the Battle of the Bulge, how we had to get the hell out of there. We were told, I don't know how, but thank God we drove the Germans back. But I've been living in Framingham 50 years, and I remember Cushing Hospital. And they bought the estate, knocked it down, and I now live in an apartment in the uh, Thumbville Farm Pond. And it's all my health I went to live there. So I'm living right on the grounds. Lillian Geller. I was a whack. So I'm telling you how I'm still living here on the ground. Congratulations. My name is Henry Chudinsky. I was 104, uh, 1st Battalion. 26th Yankee Division, and well, World War II, we fought in our dance forest. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Chuck Wentz, I'm from Grafton. I'm one of the lucky ones. I was in the 106th Infantry Division, 424th Regiment. We lost the two other regiments, and I'm lucky because half our regiments were wiped out. And, did you? and uh, I'm, like I say, I'm one of the lucky ones. I come home. Thank you. I'm here and I, what? Thank you very much. And I was in the 30th Division, first of all, 119th Infantry Regiment. Thank God I made it home. I'm Arthur Christian, uh, the PFC, uh, and at the time of the Battle of the College it was uh, December 16th. We were in Lauterburg. Uh, right across the border into Germany. And when the Battle of the Bulge occurred, uh, we drove, uh, we were counterattacked as well, and we uh, were counterattacked back to Hagenau. And if you uh, saw any segment of the uh, Band of Brothers uh, segment of Hagenau, you know what that battle was. From there, we swung up to uh, uh, we swung north to relieve the Battle of the Bulge, and uh, we crossed the Rhine River on March 25th, uh, 1945. Oh, I was with the uh, 463rd Anti Aircraft Division, Anti Aircraft Battalion of the 79th Infantry Division. Thank you very much.
Jerry Cellini here was the second wave of Omaha Beach. Oh, Utah Beach. Beach. <laughs> and Fred Trevoir, he done a prayer. He said, you know, on the battlefield, he said, Mary, if you pray, now's the time. And I prayed. And here he is. Jerry, Jerry is in the DFW with me. He raises 80% of all the monies we take in on Buffalo Drive. He stands out there at 86 years old. <laughs> 87? 88. Oh. <laughs> well, my name is uh, William Evans. I was a technician for the trade in the uh, 315th Combat Engineers attached to the 90th Infantry. And we uh, were down in the southern part, uh, connected with General Patton in the 90th Listen, He brought us up to the bulge. And uh, the first night we got there, uh, there wasn't a place, a, a building that you could get under cover. And it was about 10 below zero. The place was covered with snow. The only place I could find to get any cover was a barn that had been bombed. And the whole thing had collapsed. And I slid under the air as far as I could. If any bomb had ever come down on it, that would have been the end. But I had to get under cover. So, and that was, uh, we started at D Day plus two at Utah Beach. And I went through five battles. Just lucky, that's all. Anybody? through those battles, and is still around, just had the Lord on his side. God bless you. This young lady, I met at a tour, and I just have to say that she was a wooden nurse, and she got wounded eight days after the end of the war. I'm gonna let her say something now. Uh, my name is Dorothea Murphy Otis. Uh, I was an army nurse, and when, when the battle of college was going on, my particular participation was uh, I was in Cherbourg, France, and caring for the boys that had the frozen feet. They sent them back to our station hospital. Um, as to the Purple Heart, shortly after. Uh, uh, being in Cherbourg, I was transferred to uh, a field hospital, top that zone, and I wound up in Czechoslovakia, and that's where I was when I was hit by German sniper fire um, on May 23rd. Ostensibly, the war was over. Not everywhere, I guess. That's my story. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Robert Lambert. I uh, don't want to take any glory away from my buddies here from the Bought Battle of the Boat, but I served on two, two tankers and two liberties carrying supplies to these fellows in the North Atlantic and the Pacific. And if we made it through the Straits of Gibraltar on them old liberty ships, yeah, we, we were lucky because the Germans had a command post up there and they was picking us off as fast as they could because we were going through it. Eight, nine months. So, uh, I had to offer them the way that I, my power was getting supplies from stateside to them. I leave them to tell all of them. Without the logistics, not going to happen. I am Dr. Hubbard, originally from Alderman, Mass. Uh, I just want to give uh, recognition for our new outfit. It was 110th and the aircraft. Uh, we landed uh, D-Day on Omaha Beach with the 29th Division. Went through all the, uh, the battles. Ended up with five battle stars and uh, the Arrowhead. Uh, ended up in Romania. My buddy across the hall here, uh, Dick Wilson, he and I were on the same gun. 
uh, and that. Uh, we went to New London. We just had our 60th anniversary, and it's a strange little story because we landed in, on D-Day on the LST 510. Now the LST 510 is still available. It's the ferry that runs from London, Connecticut, over to Long Island. Now, out of all the LSTs that were built, there's only three of them left. Thank you. This is one of them. Thank you very much. States Army Air Force at West Point on November the 6th during the Army Air Force football game. The, the Air Force kicked the hell out of the Army up there at West Point. But we just wanted to honor them just to let them know that we appreciated that once the weather cleared in the Battle of Balls, the Air Force took over and just chased the Germans right the hell back to uh, the German. I unfortunately was wounded captured by the Germans. I placed uh, six months in the con I had about, so I say concentration camp, thank God, and it reached that point. But I did reach the six points in the Stalag 4B, just outside of Dresden, Germany. And uh, the Russians liberated us. They detained us for 10 days, thinking that we were Americans dressed in Germany. And we were thinking that we were Germans dressed in American uniform. We had to wait until 10 days later until the army could tell them. Officers came in and proved to them that we were Americans and then we took off for the hospital in Paris. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mickey. Uh, Harry Saronik, uh, past commander, all state commander, BFW 929. I'm from Brooklyn. Everybody understand that? <laughs> <laughs> and John McCullough and I served in the same regiment, the 347th Regiment, the 87th Infantry Division. I was a machine gunner, and John was an 81 millimeter mortar man. And uh, we got into the Battle of the Bulge in December. We didn't know where we were going, but we got there, and we did our job. As a machine gunner, I did a wonderful job. Got up there, took good care of me, and I came home, and I had a nice little daughter next to me, and we had a wonderful life, and the, next, the greatest century in the world. I want to thank everybody, and also, I won, I got the Soldier's Medal 
We're making hamburgers and black coffee. My name is Virginia Curley, and I'm the president of the New England region of the Gold Star Wives of America. We are the widows of those who did not come home. And I would only ask, I really truly appreciate all the veterans here telling me their stories, but I also ask that you just take a moment to remember those that didn't come home. Thank you, thank you very much. And Russell Ice was from Connecticut, and uh, I went, went through uh, the Hall Fire campaign from Omaha Beach right to the Yellow River, and I we broke through first ones to break through the Siegfried Line, and I got bounced out of the turret there because I had a uh, half crop. 450s on it. And the problem was that when I woke up, I told the guy, don't send me back to the medics because I will uh, be put in a rectal temple and then I won't be back to the same outfit. And I trained too damn much for uh, just going back there and being a regular dope. So they passed me up. Then I says, the next airplane that comes over, I'm going to shoot it down. Well, little did I know that I broke through. Then I was the first one to shot down a German plane on German side. And this Bach book went on. So then we liberated the, where they made the V-1 and V-2 rockets. We liberated that. and. That was when it really brought out that uh, work that you all shot the uh, band down and everything. And uh, they worked in 16 hours a day. When it couldn't work anymore, they just threw them out in the streets. And I didn't believe that until I saw it. Anyone that tells me it didn't happen. They're full of <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I really have to take advantage of this captured audience and encourage all of you to encourage your family members to join the organization so that these fellows will not be forgotten. Join all of the military organizations because we need your help. Thank you.